Joining us right now is the co-founder of the private equity firm Carlisle Group and philanthropist, host of Peer-to-Peer Conversations on Bloomberg, David Rubenstein. David, great to have you here with us. Um, I want to start with something that we have certainly been focusing on the last 24 hours or so, and that is what's going on in Baltimore. You were raised there, born there, uh, the collapse, obviously, of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. How important is this bridge to the area? What does it mean to the people who, who live in, a, in and around that area? It's an important bridge uh, to people in this area. It's an important bridge for the, the country in many ways because many uh, important ships go through that channel there. But the bridge itself is iconic, well-known, named after a very famous person, of course, Francis Scott Key. But it is a sad situation that um, it couldn't have been prevented. Apparently, the ship lost control or lost its power and therefore it couldn't control where it went from based on what I read. And I, I think that at this point, um, there's been a loss of life. It's tragic. The governor is on top of it. He's an incredible, impressive person. And he and the Secretary of Transportation are, are on top of what needs to be done. And President Biden has said that the federal government will put up the money to fix the bridge, but it's going to take time. So there'll have to be a, a way to figure out how to get people across that area, which is otherwise, uh, you know, reached by the bridge. But, uh, you know, sad situation for the city, for sure. But I just want to ask you, as someone who's lived in the area, right, I think, you know, when we live uh, across the country or we're not from that area, we think, OK, it's a, it's another bridge. And obviously, loss of life, first and foremost, we, we feel bad for that. But I'm just in terms of the area and and you growing up in that area, like how you how you think about that bridge. Well, the bridge is one that is an important part of the, the, the uh, commerce of this area important for for people that uh, live in the area uh it, it wasn't actually built when i was growing up and oh. was built afterwards but it's an important bridge and and serves a great purpose uh it's just so tragic that uh, the ship lost power and it was in the middle of the night and you couldn't really help easily rescue people but uh baltimore um has had many challenges in recent years this mm-hmm. is a challenge but this is a challenge that you know we can recover you can't recover the lives of people who are gone but I think the bridge can be rebuilt. It just takes time to build bridges, and uh, therefore there will have to be some temporary measures to get people across uh, that area. We sir- certainly have heard from various uh, government officials about that specifically, about the time that's going to be needed to get um, certainly the port up and running, but even more importantly, uh, the longer-term time that it will take in terms of getting that bridge rebuilt. Are you confident that the government will do what it needs to get that bridge rebuilt in a timely manner? I'm confident that the government has the intent to get it done as quickly as possible. And uh, the president of the United States, the governor of of, uh, Maryland, the the mayor of Baltimore, all unified. It's not a political issue. Uh, Just a question of, you know, it's something that it takes time to build and you've got to redesign a bridge and you've got to get structural engineers and you've got to get construction people. So it's a multi-year effort to get that rebuilt. There's no doubt. And as I said, we've heard from the government. Is there something that, that the private sector can do? Is there a public you know, private partnership that needs to be thought about in terms of getting this bridge up uh, up and running and rebuilt? Well, typically you have public-private partnerships when there's a need uh, to involve the private sector in some way and, and the government can help with the financial support. Here, the government is putting up all the money necessary for the rebuild. Um, so the private sector, I think, can probably help the most by raising funds for the families who um, lost uh, their loved ones in this uh, tragic accident. And I think that's something the federal government doesn't typically provide uh, support for. And so I think you'll see private sector money focused on that for the immediate future. All right. And David, we definitely obviously appreciate you weighing in on the collapse. Um, I think we would be remiss not to ask about some big news for you personally, and that is about the Baltimore Orioles. Um, You tweeted it out about ownership, uh, Major League Baseball's owners today unanimously approving you as the uh, new controlling owner of the Baltimore Orioles um, just before opening season begins or the season begins. Congratulations. Um, You've wanted this this team for years. Um, What's gone through your mind? now that you've got it well whenever you achieve something you want you always have to wonder what bad things can happen because you mm. you know life can always be perfect so i'm very pleased we have a great team a great investment uh group that i've assembled but you know it's 162 games and it's you know you're considered successful if you win you know 100 or so of them so you're going to lose a fair number of games so we have an opening day uh, hopefully the weather will cooperate and we'll we'll do well in opening day but uh it's a long season and i just pleased that I was able to do this. Uh, I came from very modest circumstances in Baltimore. 
never dreamed that I would be able to buy the orange juice when I was growing up. But, you know, life moves forward in strange ways and things worked out. And I'm happy to view this as a way to help give back to Baltimore for its good for having helped me get a very good education here. I feel like it's an obvious question. I'm assuming you will be sitting in the owner's box at Camden Yards. Um, it's an obvious question, but the answer is not obvious. Ah. Um, I will be. I have some friends, relatives, and others coming, but I don't want to be there that long because I want to move around the stadium and see uh, what the fans think, and, and cause I'll be sitting in various parts of the stadium uh, and sitting next to the average fans. So that's what I hope to do in that game and other games. That's really lovely to hear. And uh, the other thing I want to ask you is, it's, it's a team obviously you've thought about for a long time, as you said, you feel... I can hear it in your voice that, you know, lucky to have it as as your team and be part of the ownership there. Um, it is a young team, made the playoffs last year. What are your plans? How are you thinking about that? We have the best manager in the American League as voted by uh, the league last year and the best general manager. Um, nobody has ever thought that my baseball expertise was quite at the level of those two individuals. So I'm going to rely on them mm-hmm. on what to do. And I'll try to be as supportive as possible from the business side. But clearly, on the player side, you know, I mean, we have it in the hands of people who are really experts, and my job is to kind of help them do what they need to do. So if they say we need to spend more on the team payroll, would you be up for that? I'm going to follow the advice of the people that know what they're doing in baseball. So I, you know, I'll wait for look at, for look at what they recommend. So I just don't want to be committing to any one thing or, or getting people's hopes up beyond what uh, I, I can realistically do. So... I think I want to rely on Mike Elias, who's the mm-hmm. incredible general manager we have, and Brandon Hyde, the great uh, manager we have. And beyond that, I don't think I can say more. Hey, listen, and I don't know what you can say about um, the dispute that's been going on for a long time with Masson. Um Is there anything in terms of moving that forward and getting yes. some kind of re- resolution? Um, I do think that it would be helpful to baseball generally and helpful to the Nationals and the Orioles to have some type of resolution. Um, but obviously when you have something that's going on for 10 years of dispute, no one can come in overnight and say, I've got a solution that no, none of you thought of. So it's something that we want to resolve. I think the commissioner of baseball would like to see it resolved, but it, it's going to take some time to dig into it. Uh, and obviously uh, lawyers have benefited from this over the years, but hopefully we can get it resolved without the lawyers being too deeply involved and, and we can get it resolved before too long. But it's beyond that, I can't really say. Hey, David, one more thing. You know, you talk about being among the fans and and walking around the stadium. And I do wonder um, how you think about I know it's something we talk about in New York a lot about the expensive cost of taking a family of four to go see a team. And how do you think about, you know, making this, you know, wonderful sport and this team, you know, accessible to everyone? Well, people in New York who want to go to a baseball game might find it cheaper to come to the Orioles game (laughs) than to go to the Mets or the Yankees game. So, we welcome everybody in New York to come to Baltimore, which is less expensive and a beautiful city, Charm City as it's known. So uh, I think the prices here are more affordable, even with the transportation. So I hope people from New York who might be listening will say, let's go to Baltimore. I lied. One more question. Um, you've been the chairman of the Kennedy Center Honors for 14 years. You've got one more year. Uh, you step down tomorrow. I know it sounds like taking something off your plate, you've got a lot going on, um, is understandable. But any thoughts about that? It's something that I've enjoyed watching with my family, and uh, I'm just curious as you wrap that up uh, and move on to other things, uh, how you're thinking about that. Well, the Kennedy Center has been something I've chaired for, for 14 years. I'll finish at the end of December, but then I'll become the chairman of the Kennedy Center Foundation, which is designed to help raise money for the endowment of the Kennedy Center. So I'll still be involved there a bit, but I think it's a good time to get somebody who's younger and fresher than me. And I have one more honors to do, and we're going to pick the honorees in the near future. And hopefully everybody will think it's a great uh, selection.